Welcome to Science and Technology Briefing. The content of the briefing includes How the costs of Israel's war on Hamas in Gaza are mounting China's semiconductor industry weathers tough year amid tighter U.S. sanctions Asia in 2024, new leader in Taiwan, Indonesia shifts capital, Paris Olympics Grand Canyon men's basketball downs Louisiana Tech 73-70 China doesn't want to rock the boat, but India trade tensions may continue. How the costs of Israel's war on Hamas in Gaza are mounting. Washington Post. The ongoing war between Israel and Gaza is taking a significant toll on both sides, with devastating consequences for the economies of both regions. The Israeli economy has been hit hard, with government spending and borrowing soaring, tax revenue plummeting, and credit ratings at risk of being downgraded. The impact on Israel's high-tech sector, a major driver of the economy, has been particularly severe, as many employees in the sector are reservists in the Israeli Defense Forces who have been called up to fight in Gaza. The war has also had a ripple effect on other sectors of the economy, with tourism plummeting, construction halted, and exports down across the board. Economists estimate that the war has cost the Israeli government about $18 billion to date, or $220 million per day and that a war lasting 5 to 10 more months could cost as much as $50 billion, or 10% of the country's GDP. The war has also eroded trust in the Israeli government and military, and it may take some time for that trust to be restored. China's semiconductor industry weathers tough year amid tighter U.S. sanctions. South China Morning Post. China's domestic chip-making industry has made progress despite U.S. tech sanctions blocking access to advanced chip-making tools and AI processors. Although the U.S. moves exposed weak links in China's chip supply chain, they also provided the motivation for renewed efforts at achieving self-sufficiency in semiconductors. While China is far behind in high-end lithography systems, it could make progress in 2024. With China focusing on mature chip technology, the development of a 28 nanometers lithography system is seen as a significant achievement, paving the way for upgrades to more complex lithography systems. Asia in 2024, New leader in Taiwan, Indonesia shifts capital, Paris Olympics. Nikkei Asia. The year 2023 was marked by regional conflicts, natural disasters, and a fragile economic recovery in Asia. However, as we enter 2024, there are several significant events and elections that could reshape the region. In January, Bangladesh will hold its parliamentary elections, followed by Taiwan's presidential and legislative elections. In February, Myanmar will mark the third anniversary of the military's power seizure, and Pakistan will hold its general election. Indonesia will hold its presidential and legislative elections in February as well. In March, Russia will hold its presidential election, and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida will visit Washington. In April, Formula One motor racing will return to Shanghai, South Korea will hold parliamentary elections, and India will hold its general elections. In May, trade ministers from APEC countries will meet in Peru. In June, the G7 summit will be held in Italy, and Tokyo will hold its gubernatorial election. In July, Paris will host the Summer Olympic Games, and Indonesia will begin relocating its capital to Borneo. In August, Indonesia's President Joko Widodo will transfer top government functions to the new capital. In September, Semicon Taiwan, a vital chip industry fair, will be held. In October, Indonesia's new president will take office. In November, the U.S. will hold its presidential election, and the G20 summit will be held in Brazil. In December, Singapore's Prime Minister Li Xinlong is set to step down, and Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company S. Kumamoto Factory will begin shipping. These events and elections will have significant implications for the region and could shape the political, economic, and social landscape of Asia in 2024. Grand Canyon men's basketball downs Louisiana Tech 73-70. Yahoo! Grand Canyon University's Ray's Han Harrison scored 22 points in the team's victory over Louisiana Tech Tyan Grant Foster scored 13 points and Gabe McLothan scored 11 points. Daniel Batcho led Louisiana Tech with 16 points. China doesn't want to rock the boat, but India trade tensions may continue. South China Morning Post. India has announced that it will impose anti-dumping duties of up to 147.2% on Chinese industrial laser machinery for five years. This move is the latest in a series of trade measures taken by India against China, as their bilateral relationship has been overshadowed by a border dispute and India's growing importance in the U.S. containment strategy against China. However, analysts believe that a trade war is unlikely, as India's dependence on Chinese imports continues to grow, and it is more expensive for India to import from other countries.
Gonzalva scores 21 to lead Utah Tech over Florida International 96-92 in OT. Associated Press. Utah Tech beat Florida International 96-92 in overtime, with Noah Gonzalves scoring 21 points for the Trailblazers. The team opened the extra period on a 7-2 surge, with Tanner Christensen scoring the first four points. Javon Hawkins led the Panthers with 27 points, while Arturo Dean added 21 points and six steals. Grambling's Rick Gallo signs contract to lead UL system after weeks of waiting. Yahoo! Rick Gallo, president of Grambling State University, has signed a contract to become president of the nine-school University of Louisiana system. The governor-elect expressed concerns about the appointment of Gallo without his consultation. However, following a conversation between Gallo and the governor-elect, the contract was presented. Gallo's first task will be hiring his replacement at Grambling. Sears scores 22, UT Martin defeats Tennessee Tech 81-73. Associated Press. UT Martin's Jordan Sears scored 22 points in their 81-73 victory over Tennessee Tech Sears also had 6 rebounds and 6 assists. Jacob Cruz scored 17 points, KK Curry scored 16 points, and Javis Harvey led Tennessee Tech with 22 points. Deontay Wood added 18 points for Tennessee Tech. Well, folks, it seems like the cost of war is hitting Israel hard. The ongoing conflict with Hamas in Gaza is taking a toll on their economy, with government spending soaring and tax revenue plummeting. The high-tech sector, a major driver of the Israeli economy, has been severely impacted as many employees are reservists called up to fight. On top of that, tourism has plummeted, construction has halted, and exports are down. Economists estimate that the war has cost the Israeli government a whopping $18 billion so far, with the potential for even more damage if the war continues. Trust in the government and military has also been eroded, making it a long road to recovery. In other news, it seems like China's semiconductor industry is weathering a tough year. Despite facing tighter U.S. sanctions, China has made progress in its domestic chip-making industry. The U.S. sanctions may have exposed weak links in China's chip supply chain, but it has also motivated them to strive for self-sufficiency in semiconductors. While China is still behind in high-end lithography systems, they could make progress by 2024. So, keep an eye on China as they focus on developing mature chip technology. Now, let's take a look at what's happening in Asia in 2024. We've got a lot of significant events and elections coming up that could reshape the region. From parliamentary and presidential elections to Formula One racing and the Summer Olympics in Paris, there's a lot going on. Indonesia is even shifting its capital to Borneo. These events and elections will have significant implications for the political, economic, and social landscape of Asia. So, buckle up, folks, and get ready for an eventful year. On a lighter note, let's talk basketball. Grand Canyon University's men's basketball team had a thrilling victory over Louisiana Tech, with Ray's Han Harrison leading the charge with 22 points. And in another game, Utah Tech beat Florida International in overtime, with Noah Gonzalez scoring 21 points for the Trailblazers. It's always exciting to see these young athletes showcase their skills on the court. Now, let's shift our attention back to China and India. The trade tensions between these two countries continue, with India imposing anti-dumping duties on Chinese industrial laser machinery. However, analysts believe that a full-blown trade war is unlikely, as India's dependence on Chinese imports continues to grow. It looks like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Lastly, in the world of academia, Rick Gallo, president of Grambling State University, has signed a contract to become president of the University of Louisiana system. There was some initial concern, but after a conversation between Gallo and the governor-elect, the contract was presented. Gallo's first task will be hiring his replacement at Grambling. A new chapter begins. Well, folks, that's a wrap for today's news. It's been quite a mix of stories, from the economic toll of war to the progress in China's semiconductor industry, and the upcoming events and elections in Asia. And let's not forget the excitement on the basketball court and the academic world. Now, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions? Let's get the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making.
Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief by email.